here in the Huawei booth to get a, caught up on what's been going on during Mobile World Congress. You know, there's been a lot of information coming out about 5G. I'm curious to learn what's unique from Huawei's perspective. Certainly. I mean, 2018 was a really eventful year for 5G. What we've seen is 2019 is really uh, had really much more to say about 5G, specifically from our side. Uh, we're so happy to see the uh, commercial readiness for 5G end to end. Uh, until now, we shipped the 40,000 base stations for uh, 5G, and also we have more than 30 contracts. But the key, I think the key aspect of what we have in 5G this year, is Life Network. So we had the, uh, the uh, commercial network here in Barcelona and we have also our 5G phone so we facilitate uh, full commercial end-to-end -end, uh, 5G uh, that fits all deployment scenarios with different form factors of all of the equipment uh, the terminal access transport core and even some of the use cases well Mohammed well I know a lot of attention has been placed on 5G but LTE still has a long tail on it in terms of serving as a fallback and in some places a primary connectivity mm -hmm. medium how is Huawei continuing to innovate around LTE uh, that's really a good question and and let me start by telling you what's our strategy in 5G first and then that will lead us to what we're doing in LTE so our strategy in 5G is to facilitate uh, simple powerful, efficient, and secure deployment for 5G. And we've seen our strategy is really good in uh, encouraging our customers to deploy 5G. However, we're also keeping our strategy, which we started years ago, which is keeping or continuous strengthening for LTE. We see that as business continuity. Uh, outstanding LTE is the first step to get excellent uh, 5G for so many reasons. Uh, you can talk about uh, fallback experience layer for back, you can talk about Volti for voice, you can also talk about an anchor point for non-standalone, uh, you can talk about incubating uh, 5G-like businesses, for example, IoT, fixed wireless access, high dev video. So we really focus on providing 5G-like experience and 5G-like services in today's LTE network, which will let the customer continue their business until 5G becomes more ubiquitous and more mature. So I'm curious if you could look ahead a little bit when 5G is ubiquitous and is mature, what type of benefits do you expect consumers and enterprise users to enable? So when we talk about maturity of 5G, I think from infra infrastructure perspective, it is mature. Like we have, as I said, commercial grade, large scale deployment. But really, I mean maturity in the ecosystem. Uh, we've seen now the phones, there are many phones in the system, but not really the price that will make it so mature ecosystem like LTE. Right now, the compelling use case for 5G, which is enhanced mobile broadband, which is really powered by the list cost per bit, which allow operators to provide uh, large or uh, big packages for their customers. And we can also talk about fixed wireless access. We see that everywhere, and which is, can also be done by LTE. But more ubiquitous, more mature ecosystem, and also when the standard release 16 is ready, we will see a lot of industrial application, convergence between industry, verticals, enterprise as well. So it will go beyond the consumer. Well, it's an exciting time for 5G, Mohammed, and I appreciate you sharing Huawei's perspective here at Mobile World Congress. It is very exciting, and thank you so much for coming to our booth.